Hey, hey, hey. Time for an out of this world story from our space. Sometimes you gotta get hot coffee thrown at you to realize where things are in your marriage. Today on our space, brace yourselves for some tales of love gone awry. Up first, how do you take your coffee? This cheater likes it in other people's faces. My wife cheated on me. I, 41 male, met my wife, 38 female, 15 years ago, and we instantly fell in love. After four years, we got married, and we have a seven-year-old son. For the last couple of years, my wife showed signs of unhappiness, but we always tried to solve our problems. After she became a mother, she quit working and focused on her son. During summers, she would go to her hometown by the sea, and live with her parents, as summers in our city was not easy. As years passed, this started becoming an issue as I would see my son less and less. It was not easy to travel all the time. After last summer, she became more vocal about our problems, but I couldn't understand. We always tried to solve the issues, but this time it seemed she didn't want to solve these issues. She started big fights in front of our son, and she started saying she wanted a divorce. At the same time, she started telling lies about her location. She started coming home late. She put a password on her phone. In the first week of December, she started divorce proceedings without informing me and got a restraining order for me with the assistance of a lawyer. I never hit her or threatened her. There was no real reason for such a restraining order, but our laws allow any woman to get these orders without any solid evidence. So I started staying with my brother and I found a lawyer as well. As per laws, I had about six weeks to reply to my wife's first petition. While all these happened, I was asking my son some questions about her mother, where they went, who they met, etc. Some of the answers included his best friend's father, but I never put any meaning to this as his wife was my wife's basically best friend and the restaurant they met was a place we went frequently together and the guy knew the restaurant, the owner, the waiters pretty well. So I thought it was a coincidence. Such coincidences had happened in the past as well. At the same time, this guy together with his wife and their son had come to our house. We went to holidays together and he knew me quite well. We even went drinking just two of us for a number of times. So it was not suspicious for me. After she filed for divorce, I started looking for ways to find what she was up to. She stopped telling me where she was, what she did. She would ignore my calls and messages occasionally. For a couple of times, I went to the street of our home and the lights were off. My son's tablet was connected to my account and I would see his location, but it was always home or offline or a few places I knew. It didn't have a SIM card, but one evening it showed a location unknown to me. The neighborhood only had bars and restaurants. So I directly went there and started looking inside the restaurants from outside and I saw them, my wife, my son, and the father of my son's best friend. I didn't go inside and I directly called my brother. He asked me to remain calm, take pictures, and watch them from a distance. I did just that. Before this event, I had asked my wife to have a lunch with me to discuss stuff. I wanted to solve or understand the issues during this lunch. I decided to go with the plan in any event. So we met, we had lunch, she was quite strict. She didn't want to reunite. When we were leaving, she went to the water closet and left her bag with me. I checked her phone and the guy's name was saved as my, his name, Flower. I was sure. As I had realized what was going on, I started looking for more evidence and I found it. He once picked up my wife and my son with a cab from our home. They went to at least one hotel together with my son. I shared this information with my lawyers. They made their investigation as well and confirmed this affair. In about three weeks, my lawyer called her lawyer and said that we had learned about the affair. Before this, my wife insulted me and my family every day. She would ask me to spend time with our son as she wanted to spend time with her lover. Her requests on her divorce petition were enormous. She wanted me to pay the rent, all utilities, gas for her car, all expenses of our son and an enormous amount of alimony, approximately twice the minimum wage in addition to all of these. Following the call, she stopped talking to me for a few days. I guess she was embarrassed to talk to me. Five or six days later, she sent a message saying that our son was in the hospital. I called her but didn't speak anything about the affair at first. After a few days, she said she wanted to talk to me. We met, she directly said she was sorry and that she didn't want to divorce. She said there was nothing between them. I gave her some clues about the evidence I had, so she had nothing to say. She said she would withdraw the case. In two days, she did. At the same time, she went to her hometown again. In a month's time, she didn't talk to me in general except topics of our son. I went to that city, talked to her, said I wanted a divorce and gave her my conditions, but she threw her coffee to me and left. After she left, I called the guy and started shouting at him. Just at that moment, my wife's brother was walking in the front office of the coffee shop. 
He came and asked me why I shouted. I told him his sister was having an affair. He said he knew. I talked to my wife's father, together with my brother-in-law, without telling him about the affair and said it was his daughter's fault, but they couldn't convince her to return. After a few days, I called her father and told everything about the affair. He is an angry guy and kicked her out. So she came back home with her mother. Although the restraining order was over, I still stayed at my brother's three to four days later, I picked up my son and went to see a football game. During the game, her mother sent a message to me saying she was going back to her hometown and that had nothing to do with me. Her daughter didn't get a lesson. I called her and she confirmed she was gone. When I was going back to deliver our son, my wife called and said she was going to her mother's cousins together with her mother and that they would stay there that night. I told her that her mother was gone. She was quite furious. Following this, I started staying at home again. She found a job. We found a nanny for our son. For a few weeks, we were okay. We even kissed each other and hugged, but three weeks later, I got fired due to a lack of concentration. As this was caused by the divorce and the affair, I got very angry and kicked her out of the house. She started staying at the nanny's house, which was five minutes away, but she also came to our home almost every day. After about five days, I saw messages on her phone between her and her lover. She found a place to stay, but her salary was quite low and it was not enough to pay her salary and the other expenses at all. During this time, she could pick up our son whenever she wanted and he stayed at her during the weekends, mostly. By the way, I need to tell you about the wife of her lover. They got divorced, but they lived together for a while. One day, I saw her in front of our son's school and I found out that she knew about the affair as well. She learned the affair following their divorce. She called my wife, but she didn't answer. She kicked her ex-husband out of the house. She told me she was suspicious before the divorce, but she didn't do anything as she wanted the divorce for the last few years. She told me about some of her suspicions and I checked that they were correct. Two months later, my wife took our son but didn't answer my calls during the weekend and on Monday, she blocked me. I couldn't reach her, but I learned she went back home to her hometown. She filed for divorce again, but due to laws, she couldn't use any of the reasons, allegations, or events from the first suit. So she had nothing to say against me. It was just that she didn't love me anymore and didn't want to stay married. I filed a countersuit with infidelity allegations. Note the romantic affair of an affair involving sex do not have the same consequences under our laws. For four months, I couldn't see my son. At this moment, we are still looking at an 18 month long suit for divorce. She now says she will pay all of the compensation I want for divorce. Whoa, there's a lot to unpack here. She was just looking for you to fund her affair, but then you went back to her and tried to make it work? Why? You had already found out she was cheating on you and bringing your own son with her. Not only that, but you didn't follow through with telling her that you wanted a divorce. It was an empty threat. She walked all over you and it feels like you sort of let her. What do you think? Next up, this OP calls it quits and it only cost her 80 grand. 10 years of marriage and 17 years together out the window. It's over, I'm done. I've, 37 female, forgiven mountains of lying and secret keeping over money, our whole relationship. I've bailed him, 43 male, out financially so many times. I let him on to my mortgage and deed. He's had multiple mental health leaves of absence from work and I've taken on the bulk of our debt since I no longer trust him with money. I knew our relationship wasn't great. I've been dealing with postpartum depression since our youngest, we have three, ages eight and under, was born in 2021 and I really struggled. My youngest was diagnosed with a medical condition last November and dealing with it has made this last year the worst part of my life. I'm constantly worried about him. My usual healthy sex drive went to crap and I went back on birth control to help with my PMDD and terrible ovulation pain, which didn't help that situation. I put on some more weight and realized I lost who I was. We had a few conversations in the summer about opening up the marriage and at first I was intrigued but changed my mind because I wasn't comfortable nor ready. I asked for a year to work on myself, find myself, and then we could do some couples counseling and figure out what we need since there's a huge lack of trust on my end. So during my most stressful week at work, during an assessment I've been preparing for a year for, he decided to sleep with a random. He had been sick for two weeks and didn't go to work that day and decided to go cheat while the older two were at school. He told me last night and it made him leave for the rest of the weekend. We weren't doing great, but I deserved more than that. I deserved a conversation. I deserved him to let me know he wanted out. He did it so wrong and he has destroyed me. I was already in pieces and he stomped on them. I supported him. 
got him out of almost $80,000 in his own personal debt over the last 10 years. Now, I'm stuck with household debt because he barely worked for the last four years and we have three kids. I don't want to move from my house, but it's too big for me to take care of by myself. We have two cats and a one-year-old dog. I have so much on my plate right now. I was constantly communicating with him how overwhelmed I was with everything, how I couldn't handle anymore. And he cheats with a random. He's coming back Monday and moving into the basement to help with the kids until we figure this out. My mom tells me to wait until the new year to make any big decisions and not to make reactionary decisions. But our relationship is done. He forced my hand and he knew it. He knew I wouldn't be able to forgive the last betrayal. He knew I'd be done. He knew I was broken and he broke me more. It was my birthday this past week and it's coming up on a one year since my son's diagnosis. I don't even understand what to do. I don't love our relationship where it was right now, but he was my rock. I told him everything. He supported me. He gave me time to myself when I needed it. He's a good dad. He was my best friend and threw it away entirely to get his dick wet. I know I need to get a lawyer to start figuring out what I need to do, but I think I need a therapist. Let's see how the community reacts. He's a coward. You're better off without him. Don't let him worm his way back in, no matter what he says. He has shown you his true colors and how he really feels about you. A real man would never do this, and you deserve to be with a real man. Don't fall into the throwing marriage away narrative. It's designed to elicit an emotional response. The terms of the marriage were violated and now the marriage is over, which results in divorce. You and the kids will be fine. You'll move on and be happy. Keep his sorry butt in the basement. Don't let him try to worm his way back into your bed. And don't let the kids know why. That will be extra unneeded drama. My go-to is, mommy and daddy love each other, but a marriage is more than just love. It's also respect for each other and following the rules. My six-year-old accepts that as the reason for why mommy moved into her own apartment. He will regret this. Let him. He needs to face the consequences of his actions. He will hurt. He will hurt. Hurt separately. Keep those boundaries firm. Men like this think they are exempt from feeling hurt or uncomfortable. I'm finally at a point where I'm not going to let my kindness and love be taken advantage of anymore by a coward who doesn't deserve it. I hope you find peace soon. It's one of the worst betrayals. The OP replies, I agree. I made him say goodbye to the kids since I tried to leave without saying bye. He told them that he broke a big promise to mommy and really hurt mommy's feelings. That he made a bad decision and he can't take it back. I don't want him anymore. I want his help because I relied heavily on him to function, but I don't want him. Here's a minor update. I had to call him before I went to bed tonight to make sure I laid down my ground rules for tomorrow. He's coming back in the morning to get the kids ready for school and out the door like he does every day. Then he's going to clean out our basement bedroom and move his things down there. He got a little pissy with me as I laid down my well thought out ground rules. The master bedroom is my space and he is not entitled to enter it without my permission once he moves all of his things out. He will not touch my jewelry or any of my items. The kids don't go anywhere with either of us without communicating with each other outside of regular scheduled activities, i.e. piano lessons, etc. Neither of us will touch the joint account without the other's permission beyond paying the bills. We will both be transferring our paychecks to our own accounts, but my payroll lady is gone for three weeks at the end of the week, so I doubt it'll happen for me shortly. He must be fully dressed at all times in the common areas of the house. We are switching vehicles. This is where it got a messy, kinda. Our van was purchased in 2021 and my parents loaned us the money. We paid them back monthly and have told me that they are not expecting payment from me anytime soon while we work it out. The van is in my name. He knows I hate driving it and it's his preferred vehicle. That being said, he does not drive our vehicles much as he has a work van. I much prefer our older vehicle and I drive it every day but it's in his name. So I felt considering it's in my name and my parents technically own it, that it would be best I use it going forward. He was instantly like, why don't we switch the names around since you know I don't like driving it? And I was like, uh, no, it's in my name. We owe my parents money for it. And it's worth like 30 grand. I'm not just signing that over to you. And then he got mad. I then said, we're not doing anything until I discuss it with a lawyer. And then he said something along the lines of, well, you obviously don't trust me that much before since you're saying these things. Oh, that triggered me. He knows about my trust issues with him. I've told him before I have a hard time trusting him and now I have zero reason to trust him. He then backed up and realized he took it a step too far. And then I demanded an apology for that dig, which he gave. Then, since I'm a glutton for punishment, 
I asked him if he had anything to add and he got all cold and was like, uh, nope. And then I said that I wanted to know what he was thinking since I'm trying to have a discussion with him and he just shut down. He then said some BS about how he's thinking I never really knew him if I would think these things about him. I told him I thought I knew him. I told him I know who he thinks he is. He said something along the lines of, we haven't worked for a long time and we never fixed it. It's not a valid reason to do what he did. It doesn't make it better or excuse it. I said, I'm sorry for the part I played that led you to do something that doesn't fit your view of yourself, which he didn't understand. I don't know if I do anymore either. Regardless, he seems to think he's some great guy who was forced to cheat. Like he's an admirable good guy. Like no dude, you cheated on your wife of 10 years and the mother of your three children. That doesn't make you a good guy. That makes you untrustworthy and a liar. And you'll always be a liar. I don't think he's thought of the financial ramifications of this. I think he realized that that's all I think about, because I do. I'm always stressed about money, and I've already been trying to figure out how to survive on my own since I was pretty sure we were heading towards this. Do you think he wanted out and this was the only way that you'd toss in the towel? Honestly, having to get someone out of financial garbage is just as bad as infidelity. If they can't respect you enough to take responsibility for their lack of money management, then how the hell would they respect you enough to not cheat on you? I feel like the two might go hand in hand. And by getting him out of the financial debt, it's sort of enabling him in some way. He didn't have to lift a finger. You did it for him. Thoughts? Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Until next time, on RSpace.